My name is Murray Hines. I'm a judge of the Provincial Court of Saskatchewan. Drug addiction often brings people into the criminal justice system. Experience has shown that in many cases, until the underlying causes of criminality are addressed, conflict with the law continues. Drug Treatment Court offers a therapeutic option to address drug addiction as an underlying cause of criminal activity. Thank you for your interest in Drug Treatment Court. In a moment, you'll be seeing how the Regina Drug Treatment Court operates. This court sits every Tuesday morning and is divided up into two separate but related proceedings, pre-court and court. The pre-court meeting begins at 9 a.m. around a table. It is attended by a multidisciplinary team consisting of a dedicated judge, prosecutor, legal aid lawyer, drug treatment court center manager, addiction counselors, a nurse, and a probation officer. The team sits around a table. Everyone is at the same level. The pre-court is not open to the public or to the participants, and pre-court is not recorded. During the pre-court, the team led by the judge discusses how each of the participants is doing in the program. Are they compliant or non-compliant with the program requirements? Have there been successes or setbacks? This discussion is aided by information contained in a participant court report, which is prepared by the drug treatment court manager on each of the per participants and is provided to every member of the team prior to the pre-court meeting. And key topics include attendance, results of drug testing, progress in the moral recognition therapy program, and progress in addictions treatment programming. Behavioral issues, if any, both positive and negative, and general information regarding the participant are also included in the report. The team then provides the judge with input regarding what should be said to the participant by the judge in the courtroom based on what has occurred. This process ensures there is a coordinated response to participant behavior. Court starts at 10.30 a.m. in courtroom number seven. A judicial officer opens court in the regular way. The judge wears his or her attire. The prosecutor and the legal aid lawyer are situated in their regular places. And the Regina Drug Treatment Court manager is also ahead of the bar near legal counsel. Addiction counselors, the nurse and probation officer, and the participants are seated in the gallery of the court. Applicants to the drug treatment court are most often in custody. All the participants and applicants are to remain in the courtroom throughout the entire court proceedings unless they're permitted to leave the courtroom by the judge after their appearance. Before starting the docket, the judge welcomes everyone to drug treatment court. The judge then turns to the manager and asks, who is the first participant today? The manager will then advise the judge of the name of the participant and how they have done since their last court appearance. The judge then speaks to the participant and attempts to engage in a conversation. And ideally, this conversation lasts about three minutes. During this time, the judge may also provide incentives or sanctions to the participant. And common incentives include verbal praise or applause. And common sanctions include an indication by the judge of perhaps their disappointment in the participant for making some bad choices, perhaps some imposition of community service hours or writing assignment. This video will show the drug treatment court team dealing with six participants. The participants in this video are actors. Each of the scenarios are fictional, however, resemble situations that have actually occurred in the past in the Regina Drug Treatment Court. To assist you in understanding the pre-court, you should have received a participant court reports on the six fictional participants in this video.
I hope this video helps you understand how drug treatment court works. Well, welcome everybody to our uh, a session for drug treatment court, our pre-court session. We have a number of participants and uh, proposed participants uh, today to deal with. Our first uh, matter on the list today, uh, Ms. Vandeker is a, an applicant Jonathan Carlson, who I understand is being referred uh, for assessment into the program. And uh, you have uh, had discussions with uh, Ms. Calderbank of uh, Duty Council in respect to release conditions. Uh, yes, that is correct. Um, so the Crown is prepared to release Mr. Carlson into the assessment period of drug treatment court, and I will be releasing him on a number of conditions, and I provided that to my friend. Yes, Your Honor, and I have had an opportunity to review those with Mr. Carlson, and he's in agreement with them. Very well, and uh, Madam Clerk, were you provided with, a, with that list of, of release conditions? I was, Your Honor. Very well, then. Well, Ms. Burns, this is the third time that uh, Jonathan has appeared uh, in court here, Correct. and I understand that we finally we've secured that residence, uh, and there was some alert and, and issue with uh, compatibles. Um, have we uh, dealt with those issues and are we ready to, to go forward? I believe so, Your Honor. Um, our probation officer, Kim, has worked on that and she can explain where she's at and what the process sort of was up until this date, but it, he's had to sit and wait for three weeks, which is unfortunate, but sometimes that happens. Well, uh, uh, in, a, in a lot of ways that might be good in the situation. It might have been a cooling off period for Jonathan. Correct. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Kim, in terms of uh, the situation for residents and some of the incompatibilities, perhaps you'd give me a little bit of a background, some of the challenges that Jonathan's dealing with in terms of his addiction and what we're going to do uh, with the plan. Yes, for sure, Your Honor. So we've been able to obtain a transition bed at Maxi. He'll be able to reside there for 28 days until he's able to stabilize and obtain income assistance to find his next residence. Um, CGEMS did note some issues with incompatibles, but it was with specific individuals, so I'm not foreseeing that causing any issues in the program. Um, he does have a lengthy history of addictions, and he identified that his drug of choice at this time is methamphetamine. Um, he also has not been to a treatment program before. Okay, so we're, we're confident then the, the release plan we put forward will be able to address those issues, at least at, in relation to the assessment process then? Yes, Your Honor. Very well then. Well, Ms. Burns, I see with Jonathan here, this is the third uh, week he's appeared. Uh, um, we're now, we've sorted out, I trust, the issue with his residence. That was kind of a, a bit of a sticking point, and I, I'm sure he's eager to move forward, and it may have been adding some stress to his situation. Correct, yeah. He's been sitting for three weeks. He had proposed something with a relative which didn't uh, pan out, and uh, Kim worked on getting him some other options and that's now in place. So. Well, I'm glad to hear it because he sounds like he's quite eager to enter the program. Absolutely. Yep. And our next participant, uh, Ms. Burns, I have noted here is uh, James Anderson, who's, uh, who's in track one. And it, it looks like it's been uh, uh, a good week. And this is, as I understand, will be a fishbowl week because he's had two weeks of clean screens. And perfect attendance. And perfect attendance. Absolutely. Well, that's, that's really good to hear. It's something he's been striving for. He got one early on and had a uh, challenge to get his second one, but he's finally achieved that, Your Honor. And uh, there's been a lot of growth here, I, I see, uh, Ms. Burns, that uh, some of the, the things we were worried about in the past um, that he wasn't doing, uh, for instance, he's making plans for attending a NA meetings, that's something that's quite positive I'm happy with. Yep. I'd like to ask Darcy a few questions about that now. Perfect. Okay, so uh, Darcy, I'm wondering if you'd be give, be able to give uh, me a little bit more of a detailed update as to how James is doing and, uh, and has been doing in the last week. Absolutely. James has been really, really encouraging and impressive to watch his self-esteem grow. He is really committed to changing his criminally addicted lifestyle attended his first NA meeting um, and is a great fit. And he's uh, participating well in group yes, and with is. the rest of the center? Yes, he is. And he's uh, uh, having a, a positive uh, role uh, within the group and, and not being disruptive at all? Not at all. Well, that's a positive change because that was something we've talked about before that was a little bit of a problem. Well, that's very good to hear. Uh, perhaps uh, would you agree that maybe 
I should give him some uh, personal encouragement to keep up the good work. Please. I will do that then. And uh, Ms. Burns, our next participant uh, uh, for pre-court this morning is Diane Landry. And uh, I'm very happy to see that uh, uh, Diane has completed track two, so we'll have to present her with her certificate today. Right. And uh, it looks like she's having uh, um, a really good, has had a really good week here and has achieved quite a bit and uh, continues to have clean screens. Yes, Your Honor. She's co-chaired her first NA meeting, which was something you will remember she had planned to do and was quite scared of, so she can talk to you a bit about that. Uh, also finished her fine options, so she's getting things well under control to move to track three and uh, needs to put together some sort of a plan for you around, uh, you know, school, work, what that's going to look like. Well, and I think that's a good point because um, we throughout the, the program, uh, uh, Diane's been with us for a while now, uh -huh. and one of the, uh, the real stopping points for her has been dealing with these anxieties over, over uh, uh, milestones. Right. So I'm really happy to see she's, she's overcome some of those, uh, doing the fine option, and, and um, she discussed co-chairing in NA meeting for quite some time. Um, and so that's great. In track two, she's been able to do that. But when I, I'd like to hear a little bit from Chelsea as to what the uh, plan is going to be going forward uh, in track three with recovery as well as work in school. Well, Chelsea, uh, I'm, I'm very happy with the progress that uh, Diane is making uh, here. Um, well, it's not a, so much a concern, but I, d I just want to reiterate that I think we need to have a plan uh, with uh, Diane that uh, she has a balance between work and uh, and uh, school as well as her recovery and uh, do you have any ideas on that? Yeah so Diane has been working very hard and this week you know she did really well a lot of the little pieces are coming together for her she is um, look, worth looking on working on some long-term goals excuse me um, around school and work and working on pros and cons lists so she can provide you with those when she's done them. Yeah so I think what I'll do then uh, with Diane is um, I don't want to intimidate her with a uh, make it seem like an assignment but if she could just, uh, uh, I'll, I'll get her to circle back on the next uh, next appearance. Um, that hey, let's see see where you're at with that, and uh, and we can see how she's overcoming some of the previous uh, problems that she's had. But also have that plan uh, to balance recovery with her uh, work and education. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's had a lot of success. Well, Miss Burns, our next uh, participant today. Uh, who appears to be having a, a little more of a challenge in the last week is, is Justine Rogers. Right, Your Honor. She hasn't been with us that long, um, but is contesting uh, a screen. You'll note that she had a clean screen on November 21st. That came back from the lab. We did a rapid screen under suspicion of use on the 24th. Came back as methamphetamine. So uh, she is saying she didn't use. Uh, and is contesting that. So maybe we could get the nurse to send it back uh, to the lab and get it retested uh, and see if that's accurate or not. But we're, we're quite concerned, I take it, with the uh, what appears to be some dishonesty. Absolutely, yeah. And when I, I look at this and, and um, the fact that there was, uh, she indicated it would be clean, uh, that is a, a dishonesty. Uh, offense for which a sanction I think is required in the circumstances. Right. I certainly have some, some concerns. Um, uh, Ms. Vandeker for the Crown? Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, obviously, honesty is one of the core values of the program, so I think this is um, significant and there should be a sanction, definitely. I, I'm thinking in this cir circumstance, I don't mean to cut you off, Ms. Vandeker, but um, uh, a writing assignment about the uh, importance of, uh, of honesty or perhaps time at the center. Um, what, were, what were your thoughts? Um, I think in the, in the situation a writing assignment would be preferable and then she can kind of explain the importance of honesty and maybe her commitment to the okay. program. I'm sensing a little bit of disagreement from you, Ms. calder -Bank. Yes, Your Honor. I think if it's a rapid screen, and we do know that in the past they're not always 100% accurate, so if she is denying the use, what uh, my preference would be that that uh, uh, be screened by the lab and that we defer any sanction uh, till next week. We need to obviously hear more from her whether she's continuing to, de to deny that today in court and maybe get some more circumstances around uh, uh, her 
supposed use. Well, it, perhaps Ms. Burns, there, you know, it does happen theoretically that there could be um, a mistake or a false positive. Right. Uh, and we don't have a full use report uh, here. She's denying, obviously. Right. Uh, so perhaps, uh, perhaps, perhaps uh, Ms. Calderrent makes a good point that we hold off on the sanction until we've had more information and the the opportunity to present that with uh, Justine to see uh, if that confirms the result then then we do have a problem we have to deal with there there does have to be a yeah. sanction but I think I think what you say has merit Ms. Calderwreck I think what we should probably do then is uh, have a have a look at this uh, and revisit the issue once we've had the chance to for the lab to confirm the results um, because uh, uh, otherwise um, if she's disputing it uh, it might be unfair uh, until we have that information yes I agree well, Ms. Burns, the next uh, participant has had some real challenges in the I see in the last week. Uh, a little bit of a disappointment here. Yes, Don sure. Donald Parker uh, has uh, um, he left residential treatment early. Right after four days. He didn't stay long at all, Your Honor. He was also uh, not engaged in the program. He was caught with a cell phone and uh, started a relationship with one of the participants there. So he was breaking a number of rules as well, Your Honor. Uh, on the on the bright side, though, Ms. Burns, I do note that he did come back to the center, uh, yes. and he did indicate uh, that he's, he didn't run, so he hasn't gone a wall. Right. Um, so there is some hope wall uh, still that exists for Donald, but I'm really concerned. You'll recall, Ms. Calderbank, uh, at his last appearance, when I ordered uh, him to attend residential treatment, it was because of some of the slips that he, that he was having, and uh, I don't see that there there is anything uh, uh, that uh, I can do but uh, remand him uh, because of the uh, the failure here. I, I leave that uh, uh, to you to, to comment if you object to that. No, unfortunately I think your honor is 100% accurate here. I mean he was given this opportunity. It's really uh, unfortunate to see that he's discharged himself after four days and some of the other things that he's also not complied with. So unfortunately I don't I really have much to say in terms of uh, uh, there being any other type of sanction than the one-week remand, but I, I, I would also note that if he shows up in court today, I think that's a good sign that he's coming here and taking yeah. responsibility yeah. for well, his actions. I, I will uh, obviously mention that to him, that I am happy, if he does attend, that I'd be happy that he is here. Uh, but uh, Ms. Vanderker, do we have a, a new breach information on the bench that can be uh, pre presented? Uh, yes, I will have that on the bench, Your Honor. Okay, well that's good to hear. Uh, so then, uh, we're in agreement. There will be a one-week remand, and that uh, would be the brief time. Sorry, Your Honor, for failing to remain at treatment. Yeah, as uh, we we had amended the uh, the release order uh, at last uh, court session uh, for him to attend, and uh, obviously he's left early, so that is a breach of his release order. Thank you, Your Honor. And we'll get Chelsea to work on another date, Your Honor, if possible, if we can turn it around. Well, hopefully they. Uh, It'll take know some that time, though. It will take some time to work out, but he does have a, a residence. Um, uh, yep. outside uh, with his parents so yep. uh, we can work that out in the meantime absolutely okay we're in agreement then yes sir. okay well our final uh, participant at pre-court this morning is uh, uh, one of our assessment uh, participants Charles Kincaid and he seems to be having some some real challenges that something that some stuff that might be beyond our uh, capacities with uh, drug treatment court Ms. Burns Right, he's got some mental health issues that I've had the nurse uh, look into and she can maybe speak uh, briefly to that. Uh, based on where he's at in the program and the um, emotional outbursts and his inability to concentrate and grasp concepts of the lectures, we're going to recommend that he is not in the program because we don't think he's going to be able to go any farther. He's also putting his residents at risk. Uh, he's with Oxford House and they won't retain him if he's arguing He's that. being disruptive? Yes. He's being oh, okay, disruptive well that's unfortunate. Um, Nurse Jen, I'm wondering if you could perhaps give me a little bit of a, um, a breakdown as to what sort of challenges Charles is dealing with. Okay, um, because of some of the things that we were seeing at, in uh, the office there, um, we had him seen by the psychiatrist. He was diagnosed with uh, antisocial personality disorder as well as schizoaffective. Um, with that, um, he's been non-compliant to taking the medication that the psychiatrist ordered, so uh, we can't uh, get a baseline on what uh, he would be if he wasn't. 
Uh, with the antisocial personality disorder, um, they become very argumentative with any one of authority. So our counselors, with justice, with probation, um, and even with myself. Um, so he's just not responding well. And he's uh, constantly argumentative and disruptive? Yeah, he's also doing that with his peers when they're calling him on his behavior, which is part of the program. Well, that's, not, so. that's not good. In any event, it, you don't think that it's manageable no. uh, in terms of the argumentative and oppositional uh, nature of, of Charles, that it's not going to be a good fit then? No. no. So it, I, I take it then, Ms. Burns, it's uh, the team's view that we just can't work with Charles in the, in, at this time, right. at least at his state right now. It would just disrupt the whole group and put others at risk. So Right. Well, we've had some problems in, in the past with uh, individuals with these types of challenges, and right. uh, we don't want to upset uh, uh, our other participants who, are, who we've been, by and large, doing quite well recently. Right. So yep. um, it's unfortunate, uh, but I, I think I'm in agreement, and I don't think, uh, I think that's a wise decision that the team is making, and I don't think we'll be able to accept Charles into the program. Okay. Thank you, Yana. Welcome to Drug Treatment Court, everybody. I am Judge Evanchuk, as you know, the presiding uh, judge in, in uh, Drug Treatment Court. Uh, I see that we have a full body in, in the court, courtroom today in good attendance, so I'm very happy to see that. Uh, Ms. Burns, if you could intru introduce the first participant. Uh, yes, Your Honor. First one is Jonathan Carlson. He's in uh, custody and applicant, and I'll turn it over to the Crown. Uh, yes, Your Honor. So the Crown is prepared to release Mr. Carlson into the assessment period of drug treatment court on a number of conditions. Um, so there will be the standard conditions, which are one, two, three, six, seven, um, and ten, and then the drug treatment program specific conditions, which are um, firstly report immediately to the drug treatment center located at 2024 B Albert Street, Regina, Saskatchewan, and thereafter as at such dates and times as directed by the drug treatment center director and or designate and abide by all the rules and regulations of the drug treatment program and lastly um, not to purchase or possess any drug use paraphernalia including needles and pipes and those are all the conditions your honor very well and ms calderbank uh, uh, for legal aid have you had the opportunity to review those terms of release uh, with uh, jonathan yes your honor i have reviewed all of the conditions with mr carlson and he, he is in agreement including those terms which were uh, referenced by number but not read into the record. Yes, Your Honor. Very well, so that's quite a bit there. Uh, good morning, uh, Jonathan, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm very, I, I'm very well, and this is your, uh, your third time you've appeared in custody here in drug treatment court. Um, you've, you've, uh, uh, we now have a residence for you and there is a proposed release into the drug treatment program. Before we do that, we have to go over a few things. First off, can you tell me a little bit about the addiction uh, uh, that you were facing at this time? Um, <clears throat> I, well... And how long have you been addicted? Well, I've, I've been addicted since um, I was 14 years old. Um, I started using marijuana and then um, it led to alcohol and then to my uh, drug of choice, which is now um, meth, so... Well... Uh, and I trust that uh, you are serious about dealing with your addictions? Uh, yes, you know, uh, I'm just uh, glad that I'm, I'm you know, given this, given, given this opportunity to um, try to work on changing my life. Well, if you, if you want to change your life, as you've said, you've come to the right place. Uh, I am prepared uh, uh, to release you uh, into the drug treatment court, but I need to make sure that you understand the four basic principles of our court. The first off is be honest, starting with yourself and with everyone in the program. The second is to be on time. And that's a, a regular uh, theme that you'll hear throughout your time in the program. Being on time doesn't mean being uh, five minutes late or 10 minutes late. It means being on time. Uh, the third, is to try. You're going to have to put yourself outside of your comfort zone at certain parts of this 
uh, program and you have to put it in an honest effort. And the fourth is that you must get along with others at the centre and in the program. Do you think you can comply with those terms? Yes, Your Honour. Very well. Well, I look forward to working with you, Jonathan, and we'll see you back in one week's time. Uh, now, uh, Ms. Calderbank, has there been uh, <coughs> transportation uh, for uh, Jonathan for him to get to the centre? Yes, my understanding is that's been arranged by the uh, treatment staff, Your Honour. Very well then. Well, we'll see you back in one week's time. Good Thank luck. You. Uh, next to be uh, James Anderson, Your Honour. James has no one excuses. Clean screens, November 21st, 24th, 27th, meeting program requirements, engaged in group, gives appropriate feedback, aware of triggers and developing techniques to address. And he gets his second fishbowl today. Well, uh, good morning, uh, James. How are you doing? Not bad, yourself. I'm well. James, you must be quite excited to be getting your second uh, fishbowl this week. Yep. That, of course, means that you've got two weeks straight of clean screens and good attendance. Mm -hmm. And uh, I see here, uh, in your update, you provided that uh, we're very happy that you uh, attended an in-person NA meeting. Yes, correct. Uh, it's been helping me to get out and uh, do things, going to the meetings, uh, getting getting things done, like my EI and uh, starting to reconnect with my family so that I could continue having positive things in my life instead of all the triggers. Well, that's really good because we had talked about that on our last appearance, James. You had mentioned that... Um, you were worried about finances and your day-to-day -day expenses and as well being able to relate to your parents and, and your family and, and, and see them and they wanted to see some growth and improvement and uh, I think attending those meetings will give you the, uh, the tools in your toolkit going forward uh, that you can uh, continue to do well and exceed uh, expectations in the program. I want to lead everybody in a round of applause for James uh, this week because he's done so well and he's going to get a fishbowl. <laughs> what did you receive? A uh, day off or a $10 card. Oh, excellent. And what do you think you'll do, James? Day off. A day off from the center. Well, well done. We'll see you back in one week's time, James. Thank you. Uh, next to be Diane Lander, Your Honor. Diane has no unexcused absences, clean screens. Um, Diane has completed everything she needs to to uh, move to track three and uh, needs to start working on a plan for that. Well, uh, good morning, Diane. Good morning, Your Honor. Well, it's good to see you here today. It's a, it's a really uh, happy day for you today. You're completed track two. You must be very proud of yourself. I'm certainly very proud of you. Thank you. And. Uh, I'm very happy to see that you uh, co-chaired your first meeting in NA. Tell me a little bit about that. Oh yeah, that was very interesting. At first I was very nervous because I'm usually a, a very reserved kind of person, but it felt really good to be up there connecting individually with each participant in the meeting. So it was uh, definitely outside of my comfort zone, but it helped me progress a little bit in my recovery, I think. Well, I'm really glad to hear that, uh, Diane. And, and you know, we've talked about this uh, in previous uh, court meetings that uh, that was something that you were a little bit anxious about, a little nervous, um, and uh, that you had in your mind uh, put up a way to see, to deal with that anxiety and that nervousness, and now you've overcome and accomplished that, that goal. And so um, I think that's been a, a regular thing for you now in, in the program, and uh, I understand as well you had some interactions with your family this weekend. Yeah, my mom had a birthday, so I actually made her birthday cake, and her and me and my daughter had supper together. So it was um, it was really good to have like my family back in my life. So. Well, I'm I'm hopeful that uh, as you're in track three, you're of course going to have to work on that recovery plan going forward. But you no doubt have uh, the skills to do that, um, and I'm very happy uh, with the work you're doing. And I want to lead everyone in a round of applause for you and you can uh, come down and receive your certificate.
unexpected use, and that came back with methamphetamine in it. Um, so we uh, have an issue as she resides at Kate's Place, which is Salvation Army uh, supervised housing, and they'd like to know more about that dirty screen because it's against their rules, Your Honor. Well, Justine, um, do you have any comments about the, uh, the comments uh, Ms. Burton's made about the, uh, the screens? Yeah, like I didn't, I didn't put drugs into my body, so I know that it, I didn't use, and it's, it's frustrating. Like I'll admit that I slept in and I didn't call in. I can admit to that because that, I can't justify that, but I didn't put drugs into my body. So. Well, uh, what I can say, Justine, is what we're concerned about uh, in this uh, court, as you know, is uh, honesty, and uh, we also want to make sure that you're treated fairly. And so we do have a process by which we can have uh, that sample sent to the lab. And so rather than being the, the rapid screen, we can have the lab have a look at it. But uh, if there is, if we have to deal with that and revisit that issue next week, uh, what I'm concerned with uh, in the event that it is confirmed as a dirty screen, to have your comment on that because it's the honesty piece that I'm concerned about. And I'm not going to impose a sanction uh, for the dirty screen, but rather if there's a, if I believe there to be dishonesty. On the point of you being late though, do you have any comment about about that? No, I just, I slept in and then I just kept sleeping. So. Well, as you're aware, that, that type of uh, um, behavior does require a sanction. Uh, and what I think is appropriate in the circumstance is uh, time at center. And uh, I'm going to impose a sanction of one hour at the center and uh, um, I don't think necessarily a writing assignment uh, has to be done, uh, but we'll, we'll have you do one hour at the center and uh, we'll see you next week and we'll revisit the issue of the screen and in the event uh, it's, there's some dishonesty, we'll have to deal with it at that time. Okay, we'll see you back in one week's time. Okay. Uh, next is Donald Parker. Uh, Donald has uh, no unexcused absences from the program, however, he was in uh, residential treatment on November 30th. He discharged himself after four days. He was not engaged in program, according to them. Had possession of and was using his cell phone, as well as started a relationship with one of the participants there, Your Honor. So, not his best week. Well, Donald, you'll recall when we talked last week, uh, we had uh, I referred you uh, to the residential program and we had that discussion that if you leave the, the residential uh, facility early, you knew what the consequence was going to be. And what was that consequence? Uh, remand. That you were going to be remanded. I'm also a little bit troubled uh, that, uh, that uh, to hear some maybe inappropriate uh, relationships and a use of a cell phone. Um, you're mindful of the rules of the program, correct? Yes. Um, but to say that, I'll also indicate that I'm happy to see you're here today. And I'm sure um, you must have thought about the consequence that was coming to you, right? Yeah. And, and how did it feel that you knew what was gonna happen today? Well, I just have to come and deal with it. That's the kind of attitude, actually, that gives me some hope, uh, Donald. It's not an easy decision um, to have consequence of this nature for anyone who's, in a, particip who's a participant. But I'm, I read your, uh, your report that you provided me, and you indicated that uh, one of the things that you were working on was that you didn't run. And you've come here. Uh, to face the music, so to speak, and knowing what the consequence was. And so that showed some personal responsibility, notwithstanding some of the other problems that we had. Uh, Ms. Vandeker, I understand that there is a new uh, uh, information that uh, is to be filed today? Uh, yes, that's correct, Your Honor. I'll provide it to you. You waive reading, Ms. Calderbank? Yes, Your Honor, we waive reading that. Very well. And uh, Ms. Ms. Vandeker, what is the Crown's position on release? Um, Your Honor, the Crown is opposed to release. Very well. So, Donald, we spoke about this last week, and you're familiar with what's going to happen now. I am going to remand you uh, into custody for a period of one week. 
Uh, Mr. Deputy is going to take you uh, into custody. I'd simply ask that you go peaceably with, with the deputy and uh, in the next week, I hope uh, with the, some reflection and some assistance in terms of uh, housing, we'll have a place for you to go. You can get back into the program and get back uh, on track. Okay? All right. Very Thanks well then. You. We'll see you back in one week's time. Charles, I know that that might not be what you want to hear this morning, um, but the team has met and uh, we've come to the decision and, and I agree with the, the decision the team has made that drug treatment court is not a good fit for you at this time. Now, uh, have you had the top opportunity to speak to your lawyer about that? Uh, sort of, kind of, not really. I didn't really care. So. Well, um, <clears throat> it's important for you to know uh, that um, your, your court matters are still outstanding and that uh, even though you won't be in the drug treatment uh, court uh, you can still apply to have a lawyer help you out but it's not why? going to be a good fit uh, Charles. Why? Why, what's, why do I even bother? Well it's it's important for you to know that the decision uh, uh, to not admit you into drug treatment court not an easy decision uh, for the team to make but I agree with the team and it's important that uh, we have uh, participants who are not disruptive to the program and uh, people who are in a mindset and in uh, and a position where they can succeed. And, and also, I'm here to try and try to get help with that. I mean, I, you know, I can't help that, so... Well, uh, the team is of the opinion, and I agree with the team, that in your personal circumstances right now, you are not a good fit for the program. So what we are going to do is that uh, we are going to move your matters back to our traditional docket court. Uh, now, Ms. Vandeker, I trust the Crown uh, will be amending Charles's release conditions to uh, reflect that he is no longer uh, uh, in the assessment pr uh, process. Uh, that's correct, Your Honor. So the conditions relating to the drug treatment program will be removed. So essentially, it will be amended back to the terms of his original release document. So it's very important uh, uh, for you to know, Charles, that you still have court matters that you'll have to attend to. Uh, you'll have to reapply for legal aid. I'm going to grant uh, Ms. Calderbank leave to withdraw as your lawyer and we're going to have you come back in two weeks time into our out of custody docket. Do you understand? Thanks for nothing basically, right? So. Well, uh, I hope that uh, in the event you are able to stabilize your situation, we can see you back here again. The door is not closed, Charles. We'll see, you, we'll see you back in, in court number one in two weeks' time. Maybe. Thank you for watching this video. As you've just seen, Drug Treatment Court operates differently from other courts. The goal of Drug Treatment Court is to help offenders in finding sustained sobriety and address their other needs in order to break the cycle of their involvement in the criminal justice system. It takes about one to one and a half years for a participant to graduate from drug treatment court. When a drug treatment court participant succeeds, we all succeed. Good luck in starting your drug treatment court in your community.